Welcome class. Today we're going to be discussing writing negative messages and we're going to be going over how to professionally write it and get the message across. Again, this can be somewhat sensitive given the nature of the message that we're trying to send. But that being said, we're going to go over different concepts on how we can professionally say it where no one would take offense to it. So let's get right into it. The three-step writing process for negative messages is designed to effectively communicate bad news while minimizing potential discomfort for the recipient. So now I'm going to go through each step and I'm going to try to go over some examples as well. So let's start off with the planning phase. So this is where you define the purpose by clearly understanding the purpose of your negative message. So whether it's delivering bad news, rejecting a proposal, or addressing a complaint, you got to be specific about your objective. So for example, um, suppose you need to inform an employee that their recent proposal for a new project has been rejected. Your purpose is to deliver this bad news clearly and respectfully. Then the second point for planning would be analyze the audience. So this is where you consider the perspective, emotions, and potential reactions of your audience. So you have to tailor your message to be sensitive to their needs and concerns. So for example, consider that the employee may feel disappointed and discouraged. So you're going to acknowledge their effort and understand their emotional state to tailor your message accordingly. Then you have gathering information. So here you're going to collect all relevant facts and details related to the negative message. So this will help you provide a well-supported explanation. So for example, collect details about why the proposal was rejected. Maybe it was due to budget constraints or strategic alignment issues. Having these facts will help you explain the decision clearly. Now let's take a look at the writing component. So this is where the opening and buffer is where you begin with a neutral or positive statement. So this is known as a buffer. This is kind of to ease into the negative message. So this helps soften the impact and prepares the recipient for the forthcoming news. So for example, um, you could start off by saying, thank you for your hard work and creativity in developing the project proposal. Your dedication to our team's success is truly appreciated. So this buffer sets a positive tone before delivering the negative news. Then we have the explanation. So this is clearly and concisely present. Uh, it's to present the negative information. So, you, so you're going to be using straightforward language and avoid unnecessary details. If applicable, provide reasons or background information to help the recipient understand the decision. So for example, um, after careful consideration, we have decided not to move forward with the proposal at this time. Our current budget limitations prevent us from allocating additional resources to new projects. So here, the negative message is presented clearly and straightforwardly with a valid reason. Then you have empathy. So this is where you express empathy and understanding for the recipient's perspective. Acknowledge their feelings and show that you recognize the impact of the negative news. So for example, I understand that this news may be disappointing, especially after the effort you put into the proposal. Your ideas are valued and I want to ensure you to know that your contributions make a difference. So this shows that you recognize and empathize with their feelings. Now taking a look at the final step here. So this is known as completing. So first we're going to be going over the closing statement. So this is where you will end the message on a positive note or with a call to action. Express your hope for a future collaboration. Suggest alternatives if possible or offer assistance in some way. So for example, I hope we can collaborate on future projects and I encourage you to share any ideas you may have going forward. Let's keep the lines of communication open. So ending on a hopeful note can help maintain that positive relationship. Then you have contact information. So provide your contact information so the recipient can reach out for further clarification 
or discussion if needed. So for example, feel free to reach out to me if you'd like to discuss this further or if you have other ideas you'd like to explore. So by providing your contact information, it shows that you're always open to communication. And then the last part of completing would be polishing. So this is where you review your message for clarity, tone, and prof uh, professionalism. So ensure that the negative information is presented in a respectful manner. So for example, before sending, um, review your message for clarity and tone. Ensure it is respectful and professional. So for example, um, you might change, we can't accept your proposal to, we have decided not to move forward with your proposal at this time, which sounds more considerate. So while the three-step process is a useful guideline, it's always important to remain flexible. Depending on the context and your relationship with the recipient, you may need to adjust your approach. For example, if you have a close relationship with the recipient, you might opt for a more personal tone. However, the goal of the three-step writing process for negative messages is to deliver bad news in a way that is clear, respectful, and constructive. So by planning carefully, writing thoughtfully, and completing your message with care, you can help ensure that your audience feels respected and understood even in the face of disappointing news. So now let's take a look at this example. So this is where you're informing an employee that their request for a salary increase has been denied, right? So the planning phase would define the purpose, which is to inform the employee that their request for a salary increase has been denied. And then when you're analyzing the audience, it's gonna be the employee who requested the salary increase. And then to gather information, you're gonna review the employee's performance, company budget constraints, and any relevant policies regarding salary adjustments. Now taking a look at the writing aspect of it, so the opening buffer, you can start off by saying, I appreciate your dedication and hard work during your time at our company, and then followed with an explanation. So unfortunately, after consideration, we are unable to approve your request for a salary increase at this time. The company is currently facing budget constraints that prevent us from making adjustments. And then with the empathy that you're going to follow along with is that we understand that this may be disappointing news and we recognize the effort you put into your role. We value your contributions to the team. And now the final stage, the completing. So the closing statement would state something as, while we can't grant the salary increase at this moment, we are committed to reviewing compensation structures period periodically we encourage you to continue your outstanding work and we hope for opportunities for growth in the future. And then provide that contact information where you could say if you have any questions or would like to discuss this further, please feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is so and so at gmail.com and whatever phone number you have. Then you have the polishing phase. So this is where you review the message to ensure professional and empathetic tone. So please, uh, so confirm that the message is clear and provides a rationale for the decision. So as you can see, this example followed the three-step writing process. So first was planning and then analyzing the situation, then crafting the message with the buffer, clear explanation and empathy, following along with completing the message with a positive closing statement, contact information, and a final review for polish. All right, so now let's go over the direct approach when we're communicating or conveying negative news. So the direct approach to conveying negative news is effective for situations where clarity and efficiency are crucial. So this method prioritizes transparency, making it clear from the outset and what the news is while still maintaining sensitivity to the recipient's feelings. So now we're going to go over a breakdown on how to use this approach along with a few examples. So step one here is to get to the point early. 
So state the negative news in the opening sentence or paragraph to ensure the recipient understands the main message immediately. For example, I'm sorry to inform you that your application for this position has been declined. So here, by stating the main point up front, the recipient understands the purpose of the communication immediately, reducing anxiety about what the news might be. And then the second step here would be to provide clear and concise information. So be specific about the negative news and avoid unnecessary details. So use simple and direct language. So for example, after careful consideration, we have chosen another candidate who more closely matches the qualifications we were seeking. So here you're using straightforward language, which helps to avoid confusion. So specific reasons for the decision are provided without any unnecessary information. And then the third step would be offer an explanation if appropriate. So if there's a reason or background information that can help the recipient understand the negative news, provide a brief and clear explanation. So for example, we received many applications and while your qualifications are impressive, the selected candidate had more experience in the specific area we're focusing on. So a brief rationale can help the recipient understand the context of the negative news, making it easier to accept. And then we have express empathy. So this is where you acknowledge the impact of the negative news and express empathy toward the recipient's feelings. So for example, I understand that this news may be disappointing and I appreciate the effort you put into your application. So here you're acknowledging the recipient's feelings, showing that you care about their emotional response, which can soften the impact of the negative news. And then the final step here that we have is um, providing next steps or alternatives. So this is where you offer any available solutions, alternatives, or next steps that may help mitigate the negative impact or provide a path forward. So for example, if you would like feedback on your application, I would be happy to provide some insights. Additionally, we encourage you to apply for future openings that may fit your skills. So for example, uh, so that being said, you can see where offering alternatives or a way forward can help the recipient feel supported, turning a negative situation into a more constructive one, right? And then some additional considerations I'd say is maintain a professional and respectful tone throughout the communication. So avoid sounding overly apologetic as this can diminish the clarity of the message. And then follow up. So if appropriate, indicate your willingness to discuss the news further. So for example, state something like, please feel free to reach out if you have any questions or would like to discuss this decision in more detail. So now let's take a look at the indirect approach when conveying negative news. So the indirect approach for delivering negative news involves cushioning the impact of the message by starting with the buffer or less impactful statement before revealing the main point. So this method is particularly used when the news is sensitive or could provoke a strong emotional reaction. So now I'll go through, um, you know, how to use indirect approach effectively. So when you're using the indirect approach, you're going to begin with the buffer. So this is where you start the message with the statement that is neutral or positive opening. So uh, you're going to be acknowledging the recipient's contributions or, or set a positive tone to soften the impact of the negative news. So let's say for example, I appreciate the effort you've put into the recent project and I value your dedication to our team. So here, this opening acknowledges the recipient's hard work, making them more receptive to the forthcoming negative news. And now we have presenting the negative news. So this is the transition to the negative message. So after the buffer, you're going to smoothly transition to the negative news, ensuring clarity and conciseness. So for example, 
However, I need to discuss some challenges we've identified that require adjustments to the project timeline. So here, the word however is more of a transition that prepares the recipient for the more serious message that follows. And then the third step here would be to provide explanation and supporting information, right? So here you're going to clearly explain the reason behind the negative news to help the recipient understand the context. So for example, due to unforeseen budget constraints, we are required to make adjustments to the project timeline to ensure financial stability. So here we're providing a rationale for the negative news that helps the recipient see it is a necessary decision rather than an arbitrary decision. And then the fourth step being expressing empathy. So this is where you show understanding and support regarding how the news might affect them. So you could say that, you know, we understand that the adjustment may pose challenges for your team and we are committed to working collaboratively to find solutions. So here you're expressing empathy, which reassures the recipient that their feelings and challenges are acknowledged, making it easier for them to accept the news. And the last step here is offering solutions or alternatives if applicable. So you're going to be providing next steps or solutions where you suggest possible solutions or alternatives that can help mitigate the negative impact. So for example, we are open to discussing potential adjustments to the project plan or exploring additional resources to support your team during this period. So here you're offering solutions not only demonstrate support, but also empowers the recipient to engage in problem solving, reducing feelings of helplessness. So as mentioned previously, using the indirect approach to convey negative news can be a very sensitive task. So it's essential to handle this communication ethically, ensuring transparency and professionalism while still considering the recipient's feelings. So now we're going to go over how to avoid ethical problems when using this method. So as you can see, the first one is um, being honest and transparent, right? So honesty is crucial when delivering negative news. So the buffer or positive statement should not be misleading. Being transparent helps build trust and credibility with the recipient. So for example, instead of saying, um, I appreciate your hard work, but we have to cancel the project due to unforeseen circumstances. You might say, I appreciate your hard work and the de dedication you've shown in this project, but we need to cancel it due to serious budget constraints. So you can see here that the second example clearly states the reason for cancellation without making it seem arbitrary, thereby maintaining the trust. And then the second step here is do not manipulate emotions, right? So avoid using the buffer to manipulate the recipient's emotions. So the positive opening should be genuine and relevant to the context of the news. So for example, instead of saying, while your contributions are valuable, I'm afraid I must let you go. A better approach might be, I want to acknowledge the skills and insights you brought to the team. However, I must inform you that due to the company restructuring, your position is being eliminated. So you can see here that the second example maintains a respectful tone without using flattery to soften the blow, thereby ensuring the message is sincere. And then the third step here is avoid withholding critical information, right? So make sure the negative news is not obscured by the buffer, providing complete information helps prevent misunderstandings. So for example, while we value your participation in the committee, we regret to inform you that your proposal has not been selected for funding due to budget cuts affecting all projects. So this example is clear and straightforward about the reason for rejection, ensuring the recipient fully understands the context. And then the fourth step here is to use professional language, right? So maintain a professional tone throughout the message using respectful and sincere language reflects your seriousness about the situation. So for example, I appreciate your contributions to the team, 
but unfortunately we must postpone the launch due to regulatory compliance issues. So here the use of professional language conveys respect and seriousness, which is vital when delivering bad news. And then we have the follow-up. So this offers opportunities for discussion. Providing avenues for further discussion demonstrates your commitment to open communication and ethical behavior. So it shows that you value the recipient's feelings and perspective. So for example, I understand this news may come as a surprise and I'm available to discuss it further if you have any questions or need clarification. So as you can see, this approach fosters a supportive environment, allowing the recipient to express their concerns and seek further understanding, right? And that being said, you can see here how using the indirect approach ethically involves a careful balance between sensitivity and honesty. So regularly reassess your communication strategy and be open to feedback to continually improve your approach, right? So first being, you know, solicit, solicit feedback. So after delivering bad news, consider asking the recipient how they felt about the communication process. This can provide valuable insights into your effectiveness and areas for improvement. And then you have reflect on context. So this is where you consider the recipient's position and the potential emotional impact of the news. So tailoring your approach based on this context helps ensure that your communication is respectful and appropriate. And then lastly, you have review past communications. So reflect on previous instances where you delivered negative news to identify what worked well and what didn't. So this allows you to adjust your strategy accordingly. Right, so I mean, that being said, uh, in conclusion, employing the indirect approach ethically requires a commitment to um, transparency, honesty, and professionalism. So by following these guidelines, you can effectively communicate negative news while maintaining trust and respect in your relationships. And a reminder that regular reflection and openness to feedback will further enhance your communication strategies. All right, so now we're gonna be describing successful strategies for sending negative messages on routine business matters. So again, this is very common. Um, it could be anywhere from, you know, um, informing a colleague or a client that, you know, their recent proposal was declined, or if you're not agreeing with, you know, a certain procedure, anything of that sort. So that being said, um, a successful, conveying negative message in routine business matters which requires a thoughtful approach that balances clarity professionalism and empathy so now i'm going to go through a breakdown of some successful strategies so the first being um, use clear and direct language so clearly and directly convey the negative message uh, without any ambiguity so you're using straightforward language which ensures the recipient understands the message. So for example, I regret to inform you that your recent expense report has been rejected due to the inclusion of non-reimbursable expenses. Please review the company's expense policy for clarification. So here, the statement gets straight to the point, leaving no room for misinterpretation while also guiding the recipient to the relevant policy for further understanding. Then the second strategy we have here is to provide constructive feedback. So this is where you offer specific feedback and suggestions for improvement, focusing on constructive solutions rather than merely pointing out the negative aspects. So for example, while reviewing your recent project update, I noticed some inconsistencies in the data. To enhance clarity, please ensure all figures are accurate and presented in a consistent format in future reports. So this feedback highlights the issue while also providing a clear direction for improvement, which can motivate the recipient to enhance their future work.
Now we have acknowledging the positive aspects. So begin with positive aspects or achievements before delivering the negative news. So this helps maintain a balanced perspective and softens the impact of the negative message. So for example, I appreciate the effort you put in the recent marketing campaign. While there were several strong points, we need to address the issue of missed deadlines to ensure project timelines are met in the future. So this approach shows recognition of the recipient's hard work, making it easier to accept the constructive criticism that follows. And then another strategy could be to offer alternatives or solutions. So whenever possible, provide alternatives or solutions to address the issue. So this demonstrates a proactive approach and commitment to finding resolutions. So for example, considering the current workload, it's not feasible to meet the original deadline. However, if we prioritize tasks and collaborate on resource allocation, we may be able to complete the project within an extended time frame. So let's discuss potential adjustments. So you can see here, this response acknowledges the reality of the situation while also empowering the recipient to get, engage in problem solving. Then we have express empathy. So this is where you acknowledge the potential impact of the negative news and express empathy to show understanding and support. So here, for example, I understand that the revised project deadline may create challenges for your team. Your efforts are valued and we are open to discussions on how we can provide additional support during this period. So here you can see by recognizing the challenges the recipient may face, you create a supportive environment that encourages open dialogue. <clears throat> and then we have providing clear guidelines for improvement. So this is where you clearly outline the steps or changes needed for improvement, providing specific guidelines for the recipient to follow. So the example here is to address the issue raised in the client's feedback. So please ensure that future deliverables include a detailed project timeline with specific milestones, allowing for better tracking and communication. So this guidance provides a clear roadmap for the recipient, making it easier for them to meet expectations in the future. Then we have to maintain professional tone. So this is where we keep the communication professional, avoiding emotional language or blame. So we focus on the facts and the steps needed to move forward. So for example, I would like to discuss some concerns regarding the recent client presentation. While there were positive aspects, we need to address the issue of inaccurate data to maintain the quality standards expected by our clients. So here you can see by maintaining a professional tone, it helps to ensure the message is taken seriously and fosters a sense of respect. So overall, when sending negative messages on routine business matters, the key is to maintain transparency, provide constructive feedback, and show a commitment to collaboration and improvement. So tailoring each message to the specific situation and the recipient's relationship can enhance the effectiveness of the communication. So by all employing these strategies, you can navigate difficult conversations with greater ease and foster a more positive work environment. So now let's quickly go through this example where a manager needs to address a routine issue of an employee consistently missing deadlines. So the positive buffer here is, firstly, I want to acknowledge the effort you've been putting into your projects and your dedication to the team. Your commitment has been valuable to our overall success. So here you see they're trying to create that positive uh, uh, environment and create that report between the employee. And then you're gonna deliver the negative news. Where, however, I've noticed a consistent pattern of missed deadlines in your recent project submissions. This has raised concerns as meeting timelines is crucial for the overall efficiency of the team. So you're being concise and you're using direct language and then you're following up with an explanation by stating timely completion of projects is essential for maintaining our workflow and ensuring the success of our team. The delays have affected the project schedules and consequently the team's ability to meet client expectations.
And now here you're expressing empathy. So you're saying, I understand unforeseen challenges may arise affecting deadlines. If you're facing difficulties, I encourage you to communicate them early so that we can address them together and find solutions. Right. So you're expressing empathy and you're giving them um, kind of like an alternative. And then you're providing guidelines for improvement. So to address to address this issue, I recommend setting intermediate deadlines for various project milestones and regularly checking in on progress. Additionally, considering utilizing project management tools to help with task tracking and time management. So here you can see how you're providing them improvements and ideas on how they could overcome this issue. And then finally, maintaining that professional tone where you're going to finish off by saying, I have confidence in your abilities and I believe that with a more structured approach, we can overcome these challenges. Let's schedule a meeting to discuss these suggestions further and create a plan to ensure timely project deliveries moving forward. So here you can see, you know, you're uh, using a positive buffer to acknowledge your employee's positive contributions before addressing the issue of missed deadlines. So, and then the message keeps a professional tone. So it provides constructive feedback and offers specific guidelines for improvement. So this goes in showing how the manager is there to show support for their employee. All right, so now we're gonna be recognizing the important points to consider when conveying negative organizational news. So conveying negative organizational news obviously is a sensitive task that requires careful planning and execution. It's essential to handle such communications with care, transparency, and professionalism. So now we're going to go over important points to consider when delivering these negative news. So let's get started with the first one being timing. So considering the right timing. So this is where you choose an appropriate time to communicate the negative news. Timing can greatly affect how the message is received. So avoid releasing critical information during sensitive periods such as uh, uh, just before holidays or major company events. So, for example, if a company is facing layoffs, it's better to communicate this news after a major project deadline has passed rather than during the height of stress. Mm -hmm. So this would help ensure that employees are more receptive and can focus on the message without being overwhelmed by other pressures. Then there's transparency. So this is where you provide clear and honest information. Transparency builds trust and helps employees understand the reasons behind the negative news. For example, due to declining sales and market challenges, we have made the difficult decision to reduce our workforce by 10%. So this decision was not made lightly and we are committed to supporting those affected. So you can see here that this statement directly addresses the situation, ensuring that employees are informed about the reasons behind the decision, fostering trust and leadership. Then we have clarity of the message where you craft a clear message by ensuring that the message is clear, concise and easy to understand. Ambiguity can lead to confusion and further concerns amongst employees. So for example, effective immediately, the company will be implementing a hiring freeze and temporarily suspending all non-essential expenditures. So this is a straightforward message and it minimizes any misunderstandings allowing employees to comprehend the situation and its implications clearly. Then we have um, empathy. So to express empathy, this is where you acknowledge the potential impact of the negative news on employees. Showing empathy helps in validating their feelings and concerns. So for example, we understand that this news may cause anxiety and uncertainty. We value your contributions and are here to support you during this transition. So here you're acknowledging employees' feelings, which helps to humanize the communication and foster a supportive environment. Then it's to provide context where you offer context and explanation. So you provide context for the negative news and explain the factors that led to the decision. So this helps employees see the bigger picture. For example, the decision to downsize is part of a strategic initiative to streamline operations and focus on core competencies in response to market demands. 
So by offering any sort of reasoning or context, it allows employees to understand the rationale behind the decision, which can help mitigate negative reactions. <clears throat> then we have channel selection, where you choose the right communication channel. So consider the best communication channel for the message. Different situations may uh, require different approaches, such as in-person meetings, virtual town halls, or written communications. So for a major organizational change, hosting a virtual town hall meeting followed by a written summary allows for immediate interaction and clarity. So here, choosing an appropriate channel can enhance understanding and engagement, making the communication more effective. <clears throat> Then there's leadership visibility. So this is where, if possible, you have organizational leaders that deliver the message. So this reinforces the seriousness of the communication and shows the commitment of leaderships to address the situation. For example, our CEO will address all employees in a town hall meeting to discuss the recent changes and answer any questions you may have. So here, leadership visibility reinforces accountability and provides employees with a sense of security knowing that leaders are addressing concerns directly. Then we have to provide resources and support. So you're going to offer resources and support where you identify and communicate available resources or support mechanisms for employees affected by the negative news. So this could include counseling services, training opportunities, or assistance programs. For example, we have arranged for counseling services and career workshops for those affected by the layoffs, which will be available starting next week. So here you're providing resources that show organization cares about its employees' well-being and it is taking steps to support them through difficult times. Then there's open communication lines. So this is where you encourage open communication. So you create a culture where employees feel comfortable sharing their concerns or asking questions. Encourage open communication to address any uncertainties. For example, please feel free to reach out to your manager or HR with any questions or concerns regarding this announcement. So here by encouraging open dialogue, this helps elevate anxiety and fosters trust between employees and management. And then there's addressing rumors proactively. So this is where if there are any potential rumors or speculations, address them proactively. So make sure that you know all misinformation is corrected and you provide accurate details to prevent the spread of unfounded concerns. So for example, um, you know, let's say that we are aware of rumors circulating about potential layoffs. We want to ensure you that we are committed to transparency and we will provide updates as soon as we have more information. So addressing rumors directly prevents misinformation from spreading and helps maintain trust in the leadership. Then there's internal communication plan. So this is where you plan the sequence of communications and ensure that all relevant stakeholders receive the information in a timely and organized manner. So this prevents confusion and ensures consistency in messaging. So for example, we will send an initial email outlining the changes today, followed by a question and answer session next week to answer any questions. So by an organized commu uh, communication plan, it helps ensure that everyone receives the same information and understands the timeline for additional updates. And lastly, we have future outlook and solutions. So this is where you highlight future plans and solutions. So you're going to convey a positive outlook for the future and discuss plans or strategies to address the challenges posed by the negative news. So this helps instill confidence in employees about the organization's ability to navigate difficulties. So for example, while these changes are challenging, we believe they will position us for future growth. We are implementing new strategies to enhance our market competitiveness. So by highlighting future plans, it helps to reassure employees that the organization is proactive and has a vision for recovery and success. So that being said, in conclusion, effectively conveying negative organizational news 
is critical for maintaining employee morale and trust. By considering timing, transparency, clarity, empathy, and support, organizations can communicate difficult messages in a way that is respectful and constructive. So tailoring their approach based on specific context and being prepared to address employee concerns thoughtfully can make a significant difference in how the news is received. So let's briefly go over this example where a company needs to communicate a decision to implement layoffs due to financial challenges. So here the company subject is going to be an important message regarding company restructuring. So dear company so and so, I hope this message finds you well. I want to communicate a significant decision that the leadership leadership team has made after careful consideration. In light of recent financial challenges, we're implementing a restructuring plan that unfortunately includes a reduction in our workforce. workforce. So here you're expressing empathy by stating, we understand that this news may be unsettling and may have personal implications for many of you. We want to express our deepest empathy for the impact this decision may have on your professional and personal lives. And then we're, the context that we're providing here is that over the past several months, the company has faced unforeseen economic challenges, including, you know, mention any specific challenges such as market downturn, reduced demand, or other relevant factors. So these challenges have necessitated a difficult decision to reevaluate our organizational structure to ensure the long-term sustainability of the company. So you're providing them kind of a justification and explanation. And then there's a transparency where you're going to state, we believe in open communication and we want to be transparent about the steps we are taking to address these challenges. After comprehensive review, we have determined that a reduction in our workforce is necessary, is a necessary measure to streamline our operations and position the company for future growth. So here they're being honest, um, they're not beating around the bush and they're just you know, being very clear with what they want. And then they're clarifying the details. So this is where the layoffs will primarily impact positions in, um, let's say, operations teams and affected employees will be notified individually. We understand that the uncertainty this may create and we are committed to providing all necessary support during this transition, right? So the company is clearly stating which department this is going to be affecting. Then there's resources and support. So they're going to say we have set up dedicated support team to assist affected employees with resources such as career counseling, resume writing workshops, and information on unemployment benefits. Additionally, we encourage you to reach out to your HR representatives if you have specific concerns or questions. So that's where the alternatives and the resources come to support the individuals that are going to be laid off. And then there's a leadership visibility by stating that this decision was not made lightly and the leadership team is available to discuss any concerns you may have. We will be hosting town hall meetings in the coming days to address questions and provide additional information about the restructuring process. So here it gives uh, the frontline workers a chat, an opportunity to speak with leadership and management staff to find out uh, further information about their layoffs. And then finally, the positive aspect would be looking ahead. So while these cha changes are challenging, we remain committed to our core values and the success of our remaining team. The restructuring is a strategic move to ensure the long-term viability of the company. And we believe it will pave the way for a more resilient and agile organization. And then you can see here their um, little <coughs> ending statement that they put out there. Now we're going to be describing an effective strategy for responding to negative information in the social media environment, right? As we all know today, social media plays a great impact on a company's success, especially when customers can write reviews, um, leave videos, provide feedback, anything of that sort. So responding to negative information in a social media environment requires a well thought out strategy to protect and maintain a company's reputation while effectively addressing customer concerns. So now let's go over some strategies. 
So the first one is going to be monitoring social media channels. This is where you're going to regularly keep an eye on social media platforms for mentions, comments, and reviews about your brand or company. So utilize social listening tools to help track conversations and sentiments regarding your brand and company. So for example, a company could use tools uh, to help set up alerts for mentions of their brand name. So this allows them to respond to comments as they arise. Then there's um, to assess the situation. This is where you understand the issue by evaluating the nature and severity of the negative information. So you determine whether it stems from a genuine concern or a misunderstanding that requires clarification. So for example, if a customer complains about a delayed delivery, assess whether this is a one-off incident or part of a broader pattern affecting multiple customers. Then there's responding promptly. So this is where you address negative information quickly to demonstrate that you value customer feedback and are committed to resolving issues. For example, um, in response to, an, to the negative comment, the company should aim to reply within a few hours, right? So they could say, hi, so-and-so, we're really sorry to hear about the delay with your order. We understand how frustrating this must be, right? So that quick response shows the customer that their concern is being taken seriously. And then there's a personalized response where whenever possible, address users by name and respond in an empathetic manner. So avoid generic or automated replies that may seem insincere. So for example, hi Nathan, we sincerely apologize for the inconvenience. We're here to help you to get your order as soon as possible. And then there's the acknowledge and apologize. So this is where you recognize the problem raised by the user. If there's been an error, offer a sincere Apology. So accountability is vital. It shows the customer or your client that you know you're being held accountable for any of your errors. So you could start off. You could say, for example, we acknowledge that our delivery times have not met our usual standards, and we're truly sorry for the inconvenience caused. Then, <clears throat> then there's move the conversation privately, especially if it's necessary, right? So this is where if the issue requires more in-depth discussion, publicly acknowledge the concern and then encourage the user to continue the conversation privately. So for example, we'd like to get to the bottom of this. Could you please send us a direct message with your order details? We'll look into this right away. Then you could provide information and solutions where you could share accurate information, address the concerns raised, and provide solutions if applicable. Transparency about how you plan to rectify the situation is crucial. So for example, after checking, it seems there was a shipping delay due to unforeseen circumstances. We're currently working with our logistics team to expedite your order and it should arrive within the next two days. And lastly, maintain professional. So this is where you keep all uh, response Responses professional, um, avoiding arguments or defensive language so you maintain a calm and composed tone even in the face of criticism, right? So you could say something as, we appreciate your patience as we work to resolve this issue. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. So there's one example here that you could definitely go over. Um, I'm going to go over another example as well. So let's say that, you know, there's a negative a comment that someone uh, leaves so they state something as um, you know terrible service from you know Nathan's company my order was supposed to arrive last week and there's still no sign of it unbelievable so here I'd say the response strategy can be you know monitor so this is where the social media team sees the negative comment within an hour of posting so you assess so check internal systems to verify the user's order status and then respond promptly so within two hours uh, the company can post hi uh, so and so we're really sorry to hear about the delay with your order we understand how frustrating this must be and then you're going to personalize it so you can use the user's name to personalize the response and then acknowledge and apologize so 
This is where you recognize the issue. So you could say, we acknowledge that our delivery times have not met our usual standards and we're truly sorry for the inconvenience caused. And then you could try to encourage them to you uh, to continue the conversation privately. So you could say, can you please send us a direct message with your order details? We'll look into this right away. And then <clears throat> you could follow up privately with the user to explain the situation and offer solutions. So you could say, thank you for reaching out. It looks like there was a shipping delay. We're working to get your order to you within the next two days. And then you'll be maintaining professionalism throughout so that you know everyone remains calm and professional ensuring that the address the user's concerns without escalating any tensions so you can see that an effective strategy for responding to negative information in the social media environment involves timely personalized and professional communication so by monitoring social media channels assessing situations and responding with empathy and clarity organizations can effectively manage negative feedback while maintaining their brand reputation, handling such interactions thoughtfully, which can also transform a negative experience into a positive one, potentially increasing customer loyalty.